kids and jam friends! Last week, we heard the story of Jacob and Esau. They're twin brothers of Isaac and Rebekah, whose parents are Abraham and Sarah. Esau is the firstborn and was supposed to get the birthright, but Jacob took advantage of Esau and got the birthright. Now, their father Isaac was old and nearly blind. He called on Esau to give him his blessing, but Jacob and Rebekah had a plan to steal the blessing. Rebekah helped Jacob prepare the meat just the way Isaac liked it. Jacob put on Esau's clothes, then Rebekah tied goat skin onto Jacob's hands and neck so he would be hairy like Esau. Then Jacob went to his father and said, My father. Isaac answered, Yes, my son, who is it? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my meat so that you may give me your blessing. Jacob was pretending to be Esau and was deceiving his father. Isaac wasn't sure it was Esau talking to him. He asked him to come near so he could touch him. When he felt hairy hands, he thought Jacob was Esau. But how could it be Jacob's voice but Esau's hands? Isaac asked one more time, Are you my son Esau? Jacob lied to his father again. He said yes. Something still didn't seem right to Isaac. But he ate the food that Jacob or Rebekah had prepared and then asked Jacob to come close. As Jacob leaned close to and kissed his father, Isaac noticed the outdoor smell of Esau's clothes. At last, he believed this really was Esau and he gave Jacob the special blessing. May God give you many riches. You will rule over your brother. Those who bless you will be blessed. The blessing showed that the promises God made to Abraham would continue through Jacob's children and grandchildren, not Esau. Eventually, uh, the Savior would be born in Jacob's family line. This had been God's plan all the time, but Rebekah and Jacob were doing it in a sinful way. They should have waited for God to work it all out. When the blessing was finished, Jacob hurried away. He had gotten what he wanted. Just then, Esau came in. My father, Esau called. Here is the meat. Please eat it and bless me. Who are you? Isaac asked. Esau was puzzled at his father's question. I am your firstborn son, Esau, he replied. Isaac was so upset that his body trembled. Who was it that came in with food for him and received the blessing if it wasn't Esau? Esau knew right away who it was. First Jacob had taken his birthright and now he had stolen his blessing too. Esau begged his father for a blessing, but Isaac could not give it to him. That was the culture and law back then. The Bible says Esau hated Jacob so much that he decided when his father died, he would kill Jacob. Rebekah heard of Esau's plan and warned Jacob, leave and go to my brother Laban in Haran, she told Jacob. She was sent for Jacob to come back when Esau was over his anger. Jacob's lie was a sin and it would hurt many people. It also hurt him too. Now Esau planned to kill Jacob and Jacob had to run away from his family and everything he knew and go live with his uncle. If only Rebekah and Jacob had turned, uh, trusted God to work things out instead of trying to do it in their own way. The Bible says God is sovereign. That means he rules over everything. Rebekah and Jacob could have and should have trusted God's sovereign control in their lives instead of lying. They were trying to be in control instead of trusting that God is in control. Jacob quickly started on his way to uncle's home. When night came, Jacob slept in a field filled with rocks. He even used a stone for a pillow. That night, Jacob had a beautiful dream. He saw something like a huge stairway that stretched from earth to um, up to heaven. And on this stairway, Jacob saw angels coming down and going up. The Lord spoke to him from the top of the stairway. And the Bible tells us what he said. Even though Jacob had gone about things the wrong way and deceived his father to receive the blessing, God was still going to keep his promise to Abraham through Jacob. God had told Abraham that his descendants would be as many as the stars in the sky and sands of, sea, of the seashore. In Jacob's dream, God promised to protect him and bring him back to the land he had promised to give Abraham and his descendants. Did deceitful God, Jacob deserve God's love for him? No, but God loved Jacob even though he didn't deserve it. That's the same for us. God loves us so much even though we don't deserve it. God loves us with perfect love. 
When Jacob woke up, he thought about his dream. He was amazed to think the Almighty God would speak to him. When he realized how holy and perfect and pure God is, and that God knew about his deceitful heart, Jacob was filled with fear. Something had happened to Jacob. He had been living a deceitful life only to please himself. Now he began to trust in God. The one God, the true God, would be his God. When he saw how truly sinful he was and how perfect God is, he was changed. Jacob was now ready to begin a new life of obedience to God. God can change you too. If you believe on Jesus, that in that He died on the cross to forgive you of your sins, continue to have a relationship with Him. He will help you change you to be more like Jesus and live the way that is pleasing to God. Remember, Jesus can change me and can change you.